I am delighted to address you this morning at the largest ever commissioning parade in the history of Sri Lanka Air Force. I congratulate the 153 officer cadets commissioned this morning, including the 22 men and six ladies awarded their flying brevet. I commend you on the excellence of your parade and wish you all long and fruitful career in serving your nation through this institution. I also appreciate the commander, director, training, academy commandant, CEOs of the training wings, and the flying and ground instructors of the Air Force for their efforts in training the officer cadets. I also take this opportunity to congratulate the parents and families of these young officers and to appreciate them for instilling in them the sense of patriotism that ultimately led them to join the Sri Lanka Air Force. As proud as you are of these young officers today, I'm confident that they will make you even prouder by their future accomplishments in this prestigious institution. From its modest beginning in 1951, the Sri Lanka Air Force has grown into a distinguished professional and highly accomplished branch of our military. It played a key role throughout the war against terrorism that ended in 2009. At certain times during the conflict, the Jaffna Peninsula was maintained largely because of efforts by the Air Force to safely convey soldiers and supplies. It even provided ground forces needed to securely hold territory at times during the highest of the conflict. Precision strikes carried out on identified targets by its skillful pilots, including on LTT supply ships far out at sea, greatly weakened terrorist forces. The drone operations and intelligence wing of the Air Force were instrumental in providing vital information during the last stages of the war. During the conflict, 443 Air Force personnel made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of their motherland. A further 236 were wounded. The sacrifices of these brave personnel, together with the efforts of their colleagues in battle, were instrumental in Sri Lanka winning a war that was long thought unwinnable. Since peace returned to Sri Lanka, the Air Force has continued to play an important role in nation building and in maintaining national security. Its service of over 70 years is truly appreciated by a grateful nation. As the newest officers and pilots of the Sri Lanka Air Force, all of you have much to live up to. Your fundamental duty as young officers is to develop yourselves and further your careers. Your integrity must be impeccable and your discipline must be of the highest standard. As a technical arm of the military, the Air Force demands absolute competence and allows no room for error regardless of whether you are a pilot or involved in ground operations. Your professionalism, too, must therefore be outstanding. You must work hard to continuously improve your knowledge, further develop your skills, and learn from the lessons imparted through your experience. 
During your period of service in the Air Force, you will have many responsibilities towards your superior officers, your peers, and your subordinates. You must win the trust and confidence of your senior officers by giving of your best in every situation. You must work well together with your peers and help accomplish the objectives of the institution. As officers, you are also responsible for your subordinates, especially in the early parts of your career. You will live together with them, train with them, and engage in sports and leisure activities with them. You must motivate your subordinates, mentor them, and ensure their welfare. They are men and they are women who serve under you must know that you, as their superior officer, have their best interest at heart. It is important for you to learn everything you can about them, their families, their capabilities and aptitudes, and their aspirations. It is only then that you will be able to help them if they have any difficulties. Being a former army officer, I know at first hand just how impactful, genuine care and consideration for those you lead can be. In the late 1980s, I was stationed in Palali as second in command of the Gajaba Regiment under the leadership of General Vijayavama Ratna. Those of us in Jaffna during this period were given leave to return to Colombo where they are for around five days each month. One afternoon during this period, General Vimaratna told me that I should go to Colombo and come. I informed him that I was not scheduled to return to Colombo at that time. He responded by saying I should go because it was my wife's birthday next day. That is how much he knew about his junior officers and how well he looked after us. Even today, nearly 40 years after this incident occurred, I fondly remember this kind gesture by General Marathi. Another instance I have never forgotten involves General Denzil Kobakadur. One day during the Balawege operation to relieve the besieged army camp at Elephant Pass in 1991, a young major approached General Kobakadur in the field. He informed him that his son was going for an admissions interview to Royal College and requested a letter of support. General Kobakadua immediately sent for a pen and paper. Then and there he wrote a letter to the principal of Royal informing him that this young officer is in the field fighting for his country and appreciating his consideration in admitting his son to the school. I know personally that this young boy facing that interview is a very successful engineer today and that both he and his father are forever grateful for the support given to them by General Kobakadu. What these two incidents show is just how much you should care for and support the personnel under your command. When you are genuinely invested in well-being and success of your subordinates, they will do all that they can for you. That is one of the hallmarks of successful leadership. And it's something that I urge all of you to cultivate. As you rise in your careers, you will acquire more and more responsibility. Someday, one of you may even become commander of the Air Force and be responsible for the success of the institution as well as all its personnel. You must therefore take every opportunity to keep learning and engaging in continuous professional development so that you can make the most of your career and contribute ably to your motherland. This is important both in context of threats
that could jeopardize national security from time to time and for the important task of nation building. Sri Lanka needs you to give off your best as it looks forward the futures. And I am sure that as patriotic officers, you will do your utmost for your country. I concluding wish you all the very best in your careers and every future success. Thank you.